Do you have a ductless mini split that seems to never turn off? In this video, we're gonna go through six reasons, six things that you can look out for, reasons that maybe it doesn't turn off, could mean something's wrong, could mean something's not, and we're gonna go through those right now. So number one reason why your mini split may not be turning off, and that is when you have an inverter system. So most mini splits out there are what we would call an inverter system. And what that is, is basically unlike the old days when heating and air systems would either be on or off. So they'd be either be on and running at full speed or completely off. With inverter systems, there's a lot of in-between. There's times when it may be just barely running, and the idea is instead of this constant on, off, on, off, it's gonna run at a lowest speed to keep your home comfortable and reduce the energy consumption. So you may think, well, my system never turns off. It's drawing all this energy, and in reality, because there's no spikes in energy, inverter systems in general are more efficient. Number two, Check your remote settings. Make sure you read the manual and understand what each thing on that remote is, what it means. A lot of folks will treat an inverter or a mini split the same way they would treat their thermostat on a conventional system. And unfortunately, that is not how you should do that. You don't just put it on cooling mode and set the temperature and turn it on full speed. Instead, you wanna set that thing up to run as efficiently as possible and keep your home as comfortable as possible. I would say in the majority of cases, if I see a homeowner that is having an issue with that mini split, a lot of times, if there's nothing wrong with the system, then they simply have settings that are wrong on the remote. So I would recommend in most cases, set that speed to auto, make sure your fans on auto, set your mode, and make sure you check the rest of the settings and make sure they are where they need to be to run as efficiently as possible. Number three, some systems don't turn off. Some systems just simply, they're designed to not turn off for one reason or another. So I can think of one particular brand in heating mode, it may turn off, but in cooling mode, it never actually completely turns off. So if you put it in cooling mode, something's going to be moving in that system. So you may say, well, it's always on, and that's because it's designed that way to not ever completely 100% turn off. Number four, some systems you will see randomly come on, especially the outdoor unit, because the system is actually cooling the components. So we had a system years ago that on a hot summer day, that outdoor fan would just turn on randomly. The system would be completely turned off. It still had power going to it, but the system would be in the off mode and that outdoor unit would still have the fan turn on periodically throughout the day. And the reason is that system is designed to do that, that it's gonna turn the fan on on the outdoor unit just to cool those components. So that doesn't necessarily affect the indoor unit, but if you have a system that you're thinking, well, why is this fan running? I have it in the off position, that may be why. Number five, your system may need a tune-up. You may need that system to be properly cleaned, bring that system back to run as efficiently as possible, get the coils clean and sensors and things like that. I have seen systems that will malfunction and run, run longer than they should or run periodically, run at full speed, whatever, and not run accurately running past the temperature they're set to because the sensors have gotten dirty. That system may just simply need a tune-up, having those coils clean, the entire system brought back to as new as possible and have a pro clean that system up. And then finally, number six, on why that system may not be turning off, the answer is it actually could be something wrong that there may be something wrong with the system. Some systems, if they are low on refrigerant, for example, they will be running longer, not being able to reach temperature. I've seen a lot of those inverter systems not be able to ramp up to full speed because it's starving for a refrigerant. But it could be simply that something is wrong with the electronic side of things. Maybe a power surge has messed up a board or something else could be wrong. So if you have crossed all your T's and dotted your I's and made sure everything's on the up and up and there's still something seems to be working odd with that system, have a pro take a look at it. There actually could be something wrong. So that's it. That's my six reasons why that system could be running. If I missed one and you want to list that down below in the comment section, please do. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.